Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. Back with a video on software defined video. Uh, this should have been my first video actually when it comes to RTL SDR dongle and GNU video. Uh, but it's never too late to make a video on it. All right. Uh, so I'm going to teach you in this video. I'm going to show you how you can use your RTL SDR dongle with GNU video companion. So uh, first step before you do anything, download your GNU radio for whatever operating system you have for Linux, for Mac OS or for, for Windows. Once you download that, uh, just install it, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Everything that is there and now in newer packages, everything comes pre-compiled. Even some of the out of free modules are also comes pre-compiled. Uh, so the first thing you need to do, make sure you have your RTLSDR dongle, which is plugged into your laptop, and we're going to make a small flow graph, and that will actually so we'll try to receive some signal, a very basic graph receive my signal and actually to, to see the functionality of your article as your dongle. So uh, you need to search for a block. So this is the first, when you open up your GNU video, this is what you will see. And the uh, some default blocks that you normally see are going to be this. You can name a title to it, whatever title you want. You can name it as an author, whatever you want. The second block that comes um, when you open up a GNU radio window or a GNU radio flow graph, a blank flow graph is going to be your variable block. And this is basically your SAMP rate. So we can leave it at default 32K, but the hardware that I'm using right now, which is our TLSDR dongle, I'm not using, I'm using a FIDI power one that has a lower frequency range, but the SAMP rate is somewhere around two megahertz. So I'm gonna choose the SAMP rate to be around uh, uh, 1.5 mega. All right, so this is the first thing that I would change based on the device that I have connected, which is a physical device. I'm going to hit apply. That's the first change that I will make. Now, the next thing I need to do, because my dongle is physically connected to my laptop, I need to have a depiction of that in a software. And that, that is known as command F. Uh, that is known as Osmocom source. So newer version of uh, GNU radio comes pre-compiled with this. Previously, you have to compile it but they come uh, pre-compiled now. So because I'm using RTL SDR dongle, which is a receiving device, so I'm gonna use a block called Osmocom source. And what are some of the this block support? What hardware this block support is actually show you. Let's support RTL SDR dongle, 2832, SDR play, and, and, and all the list goes on. So I'm just gonna simply select, or actually your hack RF as well and Blade RF as well. So I'm going to choose hack, uh, Osmocom, Osmocom source. All right. Next thing that I want to do is this. Uh, I need a couple more blocks. Whatever I'm receiving, I also want to visualize that using my, uh, let's say in physical world, we'll be connecting to our source, to oscilloscope, frequency, a spectrum analyzer, and a waterfall graph. So everything is available in instrumentation. Just simply, uh, Google it, uh, just simply uh, search it. Let's look for time sync, which is this. This is basically you're connecting an oscilloscope to your data or to your incoming signal. Next thing that I need is frequency sync. I'm going to connect my frequency sync like this. And next thing that I need is going to be my waterfall graph or waterfall sync. And here we go. So I'm gonna just simply connect them. Now, few tweaks. If everything goes okay, my SDR dongle physically will be receiving the signal from the antenna. It will be giving that an RTL SDR dongle will be receiving it. And I will should be able to see it on waterfall graph, on time sync, on frequency sync as well. These are the three places where I can visualize my signal. Now, there are a couple of things that you need to know. Uh, as I'm telling you, keep telling you that this should have been my first video. Now, when you look at this, anything where you will see an underline, like for example, under SAMP rate, it's underline, frequency is underline. These values can be changed runtime. So when you're running the simulation, you can physically change this value using either a choose button or using a range slider 
or some type of a sliding mechanism that can be changed so i these are all variable values now if if you don't have they don't need to be stationary value anything that is underlined that they, these these values are actually your uh, uh, variable values and how you can change it all right the best way to do it is look for a range block all right so when you type in range block so i'm going to import a couple of these guys where did it go all right and i'm gonna zoom in again let's get one more let me move this here so you can clearly see this and move this down here somewhere around here all right and let me get one more uh copy and then just simply paste it all right so i'm going to paste it here all right and i'm going to give it a name actually what are some of the things that i want to be uh, i want it to be changing while i'm running the simulation or in trying to receive the signal live uh, the first thing that I would like to see is actually going to my RF gain. That's the first thing that I would like to change variably. And second thing is my frequency. So I'm going to call this. So in order for me to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up this range block and I'm going to, at the ID place, I'm going to call it a freak frequency. And I'm going to give it a default frequency. All right, default frequency, I'm going to leave it at 100 megahertz a starting frequency i want to choose this to be 90 megahertz why 90 because i also want you to visualize and i also wanted to show you guys that you can also visualize fm signal we're not talking about demodulating it we're just visualizing the signal from 90 and this dongle goes up to 940 megahertz so i'm going to leave this at 950 megahertz 950 megahertz all right, so my starting frequency is 90 megahertz. I can go up to 950 using this variable slider or range block, and my default frequency is about 100 uh, megahertz. Step size, uh, these are the steps. So for example, if you are 90 megahertz, the next frequency would be what? 91 megahertz, 92 megahertz, whatever. But I wanna go in an increment of 200 kilohertz uh, because I wanted to show you uh, 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 frequency modulation or frequency modulated signal or fm signals so i want to go with about 200 kilohertz of step size so the next so if the starting frequency is 90 megahertz then the next frequency would be 90.2 megahertz and 90.4 megahertz and so on so apply okay now once you have set your gui range block to be freak now you can simply go into this block wherever you will see this frequency and it's underlined I'm going to change this with free block and you're good to go that's it now you have a variable control same thing I'm going to choose this to RF gain RF underscore gain and I'm going to choose this frequency to be 10 as being a default frequency and I want to go up to 50 and I want to go in a step size of about 5 so starting off is going to start off a default value is going to be 10 when i change my slider or my range it will go to 15 20 25 30 and so on hit apply and now now let's call this rf gain in place of rf gain in this osmocom source block so wherever i have my rf gain it's right here i'm going to change this to rf underscore gain make sure the id matches if it doesn't matches you will have an error so for example let me show you how does this error will look like uh, let me just show you this so for example this is what will happen if you do that so if i have my id let's say i have rf instead of underscore i have this and if i hit apply you will see something is red which means something is wrong so i need to change this to rf underscore gain all right let's hit apply let's hit okay i think we're good to go and one more thing okay let's let me run this flow graph and now the next step is for you to run it in order for you to run it just simply hit play i think we're good to go and i'm going to go to my documents and i'm going to do my test RTL 
RTL. I'm just going to do RTL. Okay. Let's save this. It will ask you to save the flow graph. Once the flow graph will be saved, it will automatically start running the flow graph. Okay. Let me save this. All right. As you can see, the message is right here. So it is using RTL SDR dongle chip, but it will also have a tuner chip, which is not same. That is FC0012. So this particular tuner chip, FC0012, has a limit. I think it goes from 50 megahertz all the way up to 950 megahertz. But if you have other tuner chip, I forgot the name, A20.820T2. That chip goes from one point up till 1.7 megahertz. I also have that dongle as well because I made few videos on it. Now, now here's the thing. So you have this graph, and you would see three different graphs. You should see three different graphs. Why? Because you would see a waterfall graph, which is on top. You will see your time sync graph, which is right here, and the units are in time. And then you will also see your uh, frequency graph as well, right here, which is right here. So the thing is, now when I scroll it down, you will see this frequency range to be zero and everything like even though I'll change the frequency, it is just gives you. So right now I'm at 100 megahertz. Let me change this frequency to 108, uh, 108 megahertz, but this thing is not changing. So in order for you to correct this, just simply go here. What I usually do in frequency sync graph so I can I can visualize the frequency at center frequency option center frequency i'm going to just put the same variable here so once i move the slider this frequency is continuously changing so i can pinpoint at what frequency i'm looking at so i'm going to change this to freak now what will happen instead of zero now once i run this flow graph let me move everything on this side a little bit so now when i run this flow graph now let's see what happens Uh, let's wait for it to be executed. All right. Now, when I run this graph and when I look at my frequency now, I move the slider a little bit. Now, you can actually see that, okay, the default is about 100 megahertz and we are starting off from 90 megahertz. And this is the total bandwidth that was set or SAMP rate, which was set by here. So now... Once I start changing my frequency, you should see and start seeing in a spike because we are almost, we are at FM range. So let me just increase the gain a little bit. Here we go. I have some transmission which is happening and let me tune in. This is about 100.8 megahertz because my spectrum is up till 1.5 megahertz. That's why I'm seeing this. All right, so 100.8, even though we're not tuned into because 100.2 is going to be somewhere around here at the center. This is going to be right here. So this is point about 100.8. So there's some transmission which is happening. You can also clearly see in a waterfall graph as well. And then let me just increase this a little bit. I also have some transmission which is happening at 101 megahertz because I can see this right here because there is this spike as well. I can also do the same thing for waterfall graph as well. Go there in center frequency. I can just choose this to be about the same slider as this and then so on then 106 and you can also quickly you can also visualize this here as well because this the time sync graph will change uh, the cool time sync graph does not give you when you are working with a lot of frequencies basically what you need to do frequency graphs are the best or waterfall graphs are the best to visualize it because it just it looks gibberish actually so let me just increase this frequency a little bit more and then we can see, let's see, okay, I'm seeing an activity here. Anything normal than unusual? Also in waterfall graph, as, here we go. Here we go. There's a lot of activity at this side. So there's a transmission, a strong transmission that my RTL SDR dongle is picking up at about 103 megahertz. And this is right here. You can do a bandwidth calculation as well. Put it here, put it here, measure how much the distance and things like that. Let's see, there's a lot of activity. So this is about your uh, FM uh, range. 
Uh, I can also visualize at 9 and 35 megahertz, which is actually your GSM. Once I hit this, here we go. So let's get a new graph. So this is actually showing you the previous one now. You can see this here. And let it go a little bit like this. Increase this. So you can see that there's a lot of uh, signal or transmission that my RTL SDR dongle is picking up, even though with a crappy antenna that it comes with. Here we go. So this is somewhere 9 and 36.972. So this is probably a GSM downlink band at 9 and 36.972 megahertz. And you can clearly see it also in your waterfall graph as well because you can see this this is much darker as compared to this and uh, so so that's the idea that's the idea behind it this should have been my first video this is how you connect your RTL SDR dongle with Kuno Radio and visualize the signal this should have been your first flow graph when it comes to RTL SDR dongle um, it's never too late so uh, if you have any questions uh, leave it in the comment section don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.